in terms of the G8, its, its agenda, in a sense, is, is more ambitious because we're dealing with a wider range of issues uh, when you get into issues like uh, uh, security and, and challenges of development. Uh, but you're dealing there, um, uh, granted, with a smaller group, but a group that, for the most part, shares values, um, has deep friendships, strong alliances of some standing. So. Um, we're able, uh, I, I think, frankly, to mobilize effectively on a wider range of issues. Uh, but look, I, uh, you know, as I say, I think the jury's out to some degree. Uh, will the G20 continue to be as effective going forward? Um, but my bet is it will be, um, not just because I've seen some hopeful signs, but also because, um, but also because there has to be such a thing, mm -hmm. and in a sense, it has to work. Uh, you know, I. I, I think one thing we've been reminded of, and I say this as somebody who's a, you know, as, as everybody knows, I think a very strong uh, uh, believer in a market economy, a very strong free enterpriser, but we do know from our own historical experience and our own development that while the market, um, uh, you know, is the best tool we have for harnessing growth and creating long-term prosperity, a completely unregulated, ungoverned market, market without governance, is unstable. And to the extent we now have a truly globalized economy, we need some semblance of global governance. That's what the G20 is. So if the G20 doesn't work, something else will have to, will have to fill that, that gap. Uh, so I, I believe ultimately everyone around the table will make it work. Would it be a fair description that you see the G20 essentially as a steering committee for the global economy? Yeah, I, I, no, I think that's determining uh, global economic issues. I think that's what it is, Parent. I don't think you know we're not talking about world government. I, mean, I don't think anybody's going to come in and say we're prepared to surrender our sovereignty to the G20 or some other body. But what they are going to say in practice is that we need to coordinate our policies um, to create stability for all of us. Uh, that's what we've learned, and and people are going to. I think countries over time, with sufficient dis discussion, will contribute to a consensus on what, you know, kind of what core policies we need. You know, there's, therefore, is example, for example, there's a fairly detailed consensus that was brought forward. Canada uh, and India co-chaired the group on financial regulation. We reached a fairly detailed consensus about what needs to be done. Um, part of the reason I, I take on these bank taxes, because I wasn't part of the consensus, but part of a consensus of what needed to be done and through the Financial Stability Board and Basel and other things, uh, actors are working to implement that. Now, it doesn't mean it isn't going to go through many iterations. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be things dropped and things added, and there will be people probably trying to backtrack on some commitments or add others. But I think everybody understands the necessity of the exercise is agreed in principle, and we'll get there.